Recently, someone asked about how to create a moving bullet point on a slide. So I thought I would demonstrate how we can do that using a simple motion path and the relative start point feature. So I've got a screen here with four like key points on the slide, and you can see that I've added a red circle, and I've just named it in the timeline moving circle. And I have it appearing at cue point one. So we've already built some cue points out here for you. Uh, and this is going to animate in at cue point one. Now, the design is going to be this appears, and then as the narrator continues with the conversation, when they mention cue point two or they mention item two, it moves down to item two. And we're going to use a motion path to do that. So let me show you first how to add that simple down motion path to get it in alignment. And I'll just check here, and I'm going to create an animation. I have the red circle create, uh, selected, and I'm going to add a motion path. The default path uh, is that is going to be down. So once I set, uh, select that, it's going to show the down motion path. And you can see the ghost image of that. It's not quite around the circle. And I want it to be around the circle. Uh, so I'm going to change the length of this. I tend to do this with the um, pixel points. So I'm going to change this from 180 to 156. Now, 156 is going to be just about right. And one of the reasons I know that, and I'll just show you something that I sometimes do, if I select the original circle here, uh, you'll see that it is a, a Y position of 438. And if I select the second one, it is the Y position of 594. <clears throat> and if you subtract uh, 438 from 594, you end up with that 156. So I really want this to move that same distance. So before we test it, we are going to come in here and adjust the trigger. Right now, it's moving when the timeline starts. I'm going to change that to be when the timeline reaches. And I'm going to change time to cue point. I'm going to change this to cue point two. Now we can preview and see if that first motion works for us. So it's going to animate in, and then at the second cue point, it's going to move to the second item. Now that movement was a little slow, so we're going to adjust that, but you can see that it aligns up quite nicely for us. So let's adjust that motion path. I'm going to select it here on the slide, and I'm going to change first the speed. I would like for the speed to be a lot quicker, so I'm going down to one. I could go to 0.75 since that's the speed of the animations as well and uh, that'll work fine. But now I need to adjust some of the path options. So I'm gonna select path options, and some of these we aren't gonna worry about. Uh, if you ever do come in here, you might want to adjust easing on certain ones, like uh, take the easing out. For this particular exercise, I think the easing in and out works fine, but the main one we're concerned with is relative start point. Now, when I first choose relative start point, since I'm right now only have the one motion path trigger, you're really not going to see a difference. So if I play this, it's going to play just like before, except a little bit faster. Here it comes, and then it's going to move a little bit quicker speed to the next bullet. So let's continue. We don't need to add another motion. We're just going to change and add another trigger. So I'm going to copy this trigger and hit paste. And then I'm going to say, this time, move it at Q.3. And then I can copy and paste, or just paste again. But I want to change this one to Q.4. I'm eventually going to have a 2, and a 3, and a 4. Now, if I've lined these up, which I did, using the distribution piece, if you don't know what that is, I'll show it to you here. I can select these items, and I can come into Format and tell them to be distributed vertically. Then if I use the same length of motion path, that 156, then this should work. Let's test it out. It animates in, it moves, and now let's see if it moves again. It does, and it does. And that's using that relative start point. The point of relative start point is going to move it, the object, from the last place it was left. And that gives us that ability to create that floating bullet point using motion path and relative start point.